Got the brake. Whew, that's promising. Hey everyone, welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. Today we're going to take a look at the Quantum Evo Solid and Pearl from Brunswick. Now the Quantum nameplate has been around since the 90s and has always been towards the high end of the Brunswick performance spectrum. Now Brunswick has always pushed the envelope with the Quantum series and these new Evos are no exception. So unlike the Quantums in the past, which were symmetric, these new Quantum Evos are asymmetric. So they give you a little bit more shape down lane. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about core shapes. So the core shapes in each of these have been slightly modified to better accentuate what they're meant to do on the lane. So let's start here with the Quantum Evo Solid. Slightly lower RG, lower differential, and lower intermediate. Now what does that all mean? It means a smoother, more continuous shape through the pin deck. So flipping over to the Quantum Evo Pearl, higher RG, higher differential, and higher intermediate. Now this core is going to create more length and more response off the dry boards down lane. Now both of these balls feature DOT technology, and this time around we're featuring Dynamicore 2. Now what is Dynamicore 2? Dynamicore 2 is a more durable fill material that replicates the hitting power of the cover stock material. Now the previous Quantums up until this point were two-piece bowling balls, so nothing but core and cover stock. So by adding in Dynamicore 2, it gives us more core dynamic options, and it also makes these balls available in 12 and 13 pounds. Now that's a whole lot of technical info, but let's see if they roll any good. Let's send it over to Brandon on the lands. Randall's back again. We've got the Quantum Evo Solid and the Quantum Evo Pearl today. Let's see how they go out here on 40 foot Stonehenge. Feet 28. Let's get this one around the third arrow. read a little bit early. It's a lot of surface in this ball coming out at 500,000, 1500. That's just a really dull ball. If you recall when I reviewed the GB4, it came at a very similar surface. Not just a lot of bowling ball. I'll probably be shining this ball up later. But let's make a little adjustment, get a little more of the oil and see what happens. Another couple boards left. Create a little bit more angle by opening my angles up that way. Feeding it further right, getting it to dry a little more, getting my hand around it. A lot of dull balls like to see that. Keep going left. I just want to circle this. Off balance. That worked. I was a little bit inside target. That ball rolled up. Still rolled up even a little bit early, considering I still missed that inside in the oil. But I'm lucky I got the 10 out. Let's throw a better shot. Pretty happy with that. That got up the spot the right way and it rolled and still had some back end without being too crazy. Keep striking with the quantum. It's just a little flat. I think I'd want to see a little bit more oil for this ball. Or a little bit less surface. That got to the spot fine, it rolled okay, but just seemed a little bit too early and not enough pop down lane. That tells me I gotta go to the Pearl. Quantum Evo Pearl. I drilled my pearl a little bit different actually. 45 by four and three quarters by 45 on the solid. Just my very standard, rolly, all-purpose type ball motion. I went 50 by five by 30 on the pearl. A little bit more dynamic, a little more finish down lane, and actually the same layout I used on the Polaris. I love the way the Polaris rolled. Hopefully I get that same kind of shape, but just a little bit longer with this ball. Let's hope this ball hits the spot a little better. That definitely hit the corner a lot more than the solid. Much more dynamic and stronger down the lane. That really made a good corner down the lane. Let's keep doing that. We got some ball reaction here. I think this Pearl's the right matchup today. Three boards with my feet, two with my eyes. Let's see what happens to get to the friction a little sooner. Slap the 10 the right way and that looked pretty good. I wanna throw a couple more shots here because that looked quite promising and a lot better than what the solid did on this pattern. Firmer, more up the boards. Ooh, that made me look 
good. That looked really good, actually. I'm really liking what I see out of this ball. Pretty strong in the mids and some real nice continuation down lane without being too snappy. I'm always scared about seeing snappy out of pearl balls. Let's keep going here. Let's move another two to the right. Balance. Got the break. Straight is greater on fresh oil, I guess. Oh yeah, 10 back. I'm really liking this look right now. The Evo solid was burning up from this spot and not finishing down the lane. So let's see if the Pearl will make the corner. 10 left, softening up. Okay, I'm happy to see that this ball hit the corner that well though. It's pretty smooth. Still a good shot regardless of the outcome. All right, question time. When the original Quantums came out, they're absolutely cutting edge technology. That was common fact pretty much in bowling. The Fire, the Helix, Sage, some of my favorites out there. Anyways, were there any balls since that that you consider cutting edge that were ahead of their time that changed the way that bowling balls were made, produced, or how they rolled? Let us know in the comments below. Zenith Pearl. I reviewed this ball a little while ago. One of my favorites, it's been in my turn and bag this whole time. And I'm just really happy the ball reaction I get out of this. It's fairly even, fairly smooth, and I'm guessing maybe slightly weaker than the Evo Pearl. Let's find out. Same hook in alignment. A little rollier, a little smoother. I think a two and one move to the right would be perfect now. Two and one right with the Zenith Pearl. Match me up with the Evil Pearl. Similar, but not quite the same. Quantum Evil Pearl is definitely stronger and definitely a little bit more angular down the lane. Stop in the Pro Shop quick. Hit a quick 3000 on the Evo Solid. Let's see what happens with a little bit less surface. I don't think there's enough volume out there today for this ball at box finish. And I want to give this ball a chance. So let's see what happens here. Let's see a little bit more length down the lane, hopefully, and a little bit more pop. That was okay. It was, wasn't was a great shot, but it hit the pins a little bit better. It did continue a bit better. Close. Let's move a pinch left, take my speed down just a hair. Nope, got away with it. I don't think I would've carried that at the original finish. This is definitely a better look for me on this pattern. Way better. That's the ball reaction I'm looking for. A little bit more angular than my Obsession Tour Solid. Definitely a lot smoother and more even than other my Polaris or the Quantum Evil Pearl. Let's keep going here. This is the reaction I've been looking for. And back. This is the right look. I think in terms of scoring, this ball with this look is actually better than the Pearl on this pattern. Pearl being a little bit more angular could be a little bit dangerous down lane on the fresh. This is really smooth and even. I don't think I'm gonna do any worse than four, nine, or 10 pin, unless I throw a terrible. Yep, snap the 10 out. This shape kind of reminds me of my Omni Solid. I'm starting to like that. The core numbers kind of remind me of it, and the shape down lane is somewhat similar. Maybe a pinch more rolly, but in this surface, compared to my Omni back when it was at 2000, I definitely see some similarities. Last shot with the Evo Solid. I'm gonna move a few boards right, give it some heat, and we'll go back to the shop. <laughs> Didn't let go, 10 back. Guess we're going back to the shop. Back from the lanes, here at the Quantum Evo Solid and the Quantum Evo Pearl. I had a really good time out there bowling on Stonehenge. It was a 40 foot pattern, slightly harder than your typical house shot, but a little more blended. I had some decent ball reaction out there. Initially though, my ball reaction was a bit sketched with the Evo Solid, I was just a little bit too dull. It's important to get the right cover surface on your bowling ball to match the lanes out there and 500, 1500 was a little too much. Picking it up with the 3000 pad gave me a great look out there. It would strike or at least at worst, it would be a hard tap and those balls all had a chance though. It was just very controllable for a strong ball without doing anything crazy and unpredictable. I enjoyed the shape I saw by playing straight and being firm with my speed, but I still had an okay look trying to get around it a little bit too. 
although it's probably not a ball I'd want to chase all the way left on the lane. When I need to get there, that's where the Evil Pearl comes in play. This ball was a little bit more dynamic, revved up a little bit later, and was definitely stronger down lane and allowed me to chase the oil further left, get the ball further right, and still see recovery. That's the advantage of having a Pearl ball. It's also the advantage of having a ball with a bit of a stronger core. Compared to the Zenith Pearl, I found the Quantum Evil Pearl to be a little bit stronger. Quantum Evil Pearl allowed me to get two boards left with my feet, one with my eyes, and out to the same spot. Exceptional recovery down lane. The Zenith Pearl almost looked lazy and smooth compared to it, and that ball is not lazy nor smooth. I was just quite impressed with what I saw, and it was just a very dynamic, strong ball. I recommend the Quantum Evil Pearl for people who want to open their angles up and see a little bit more down lane recovery. This is more beneficial when you're standing a little bit further left if you're a right-handed bowler or bowling on longer oil where you need that extra help. Quantum Evil Solid, it's more of all-purpose ball motion for medium to heavy oil. A ball for medium patterns, I probably could have thrown it on the short. It probably still could come into play on certain long patterns when I want to stay a little tighter with my angles. Definitely see this ball being more versatile and fitting a lot of different styles, especially with the surface change. I was really impressed at how the surface change got the ball further down lane and gave it a lot more kick. And I was a little bit concerned after my first two shots that the really dull surface as to what I was going to see out there. I didn't throw it out there today. My Zenith Solid would definitely be a lot earlier and flatter than the Quantum Evo Solid. Sort of that same relationship you saw with the Pearls. With five high-end balls in Brunswick's current lineup, Jung Ass are just too many balls and they overlap. I'm thinking actually not. I find that the Quantum Evo Solid fits between the original Zenith Solid and the Zenith Hybrid. Probably a little closer to the Hybrid than anything. The Quantum Evo Pearl is a little bit stronger and definitely more shapely down lane with a little bit more back end than the Zenith Pearl. You don't need all five balls in your bag, but these are two options that could definitely help round it out. The patterns are longer. I could see the advantage of using the Quantum Evo Pearl over the Zenith Pearl. That little bit of extra back end motion and recovery is gonna be really beneficial when there's not a lot of territory down lane to see hook. Two slightly different balls, kind of tough to have both in my bag at the same time. Ultimately, what I really need is I need more games than my Quantum Evo Pearl. What you just saw were my first shots with these balls. It's really hard to decide if a ball is going to make my tournament arsenal after a dozen shots, but so far I've been really impressed. I did something really interesting with my layout on the Quantum Evo Solid. With dot technology, the pin is actually on the underside of the ball and there's a dot here to signify where, I guess, what the pin would be on a normal bowling ball. In order to get the layout that I wanted specifically right down to the degree, I had to drill through the dot. With most bowling balls, you'd be drilling through the weakest part of the ball, and that would void the warranty. If you have any cracks or there's any damage, you're not gonna get that ball covered. There's a two-year warranty on these balls. You can drill them anywhere you want on the proper hemisphere of the ball, and it's not gonna affect your ball reaction or durability of the ball. The star of the next vid is gonna be Jimu. Two-hand rev monster is back, and he's gonna show you how some of the new low-end balls compare. Don't forget to comment below on which ball you think was way ahead of its time and revolutionized bowling. For me, that ball is Ebonite's The One. It was a big, strong ball that wasn't dull, that still hooked a ton, and it was porous. Like, by the time the ball came back, like, the oil had already soaked in. I didn't have to wipe it with my towel, and yeah, that thing just hooked, covered tons of boards in the back end. It's the first time I've ever seen a ball absorb oil like that, yet be shiny, and it just rolled amazing. Thanks for watching. See you next time, next Monday, 6 a.m. Pacific.